the death of this Formula One uh, driver is such a tragedy. Maria de Bellota died at 33. And um, they're saying that uh, there's no obvious sign of why she died, maybe of natural causes. And perhaps this could be the truth in that she did suffer some serious injuries and perhaps uh, she succumbed to them. But on the other hand, I want to believe that it could have been suicide. Now, um, when you look at the pictures that we have here, here is her in her Formula One uniform. She looks so young and her hair seems to be blonde and, and so happy. But then after the, the accident she had and losing the eye and all the serious injuries, now look how she looks, gray headed. And she looks like a middle-aged person here. She doesn't look like somebody who's 33. Now, this begs the question of women, you know, sort of trying to be modern and getting the things that aren't traditionally the take. Um, they want to be in the military. They want to be doing strength jobs. Listen, in the past, women used to do things like nursing, uh, teaching, you know, service jobs. Not these strenuous jobs. Now, women don't have that kind of strength, okay? Somebody said that women have a lot of strength in the uterus to be able to help in uh, childbirth and so on. Um, can you imagine a woman is holding on to something, trying, doing like tug of war, for example, going on like two, three, four hours? She can't. She doesn't have that endurance, that kind of strength. On the other hand, uh, a man doesn't have the fetus, and um, he might not be able to uh, tend to kids, you know, a newborn baby, and so on. Um, you know, after being a construction worker, I mean, his normal touch is going to be so hard that he might injure this child. Uh, she needs, he or she, the baby needs a, a tender, you know, body and touch and so forth. And this is why women wear this, you know, light and, and soft and the flesh is tender because the baby's lying there. And even the old man too lying on that nice body, it's be so refreshing and so uh, recreative and uh, energetic and energizing and so on. And so, um, she's gone into this formula racing and perhaps uh, she got distracted with some feminine sort of view. Bam, the accident or I don't know, maybe it might have been a malfunction car. I didn't study the accident, but you know. Uh, but then, no, I, I guess the injury could have caused degeneration. But then, I, I want to believe she's kind of, doubt, you know, sort of doubting and, and double um, checking. Like, had I just married my boyfriend and gone home and be mom? You know, it would be such a different thing and worrying how, you know, she doesn't look good. Because women, no matter how old they are, they like to be told they're pretty. And they do things to uh, maintain that aura of beauty and so on. Because perhaps this helps to attract the male and uh, so on. Uh, I recall in Puerto Rico, there are some women in the uh, Puerto Rican police, state police. And um, they went to front line at the universities of the strike and so forth and when the action came to them uh, and they tried to cross the line the women were pulling the face back because they don't want somebody to pull the hair or to scratch them in the face because after she leaves that job she has to go in society looking good and um, she wants to be able to attract her man now for example if she got her face burnt up and cut up and scarred up and uh, no plastic surgery or, or cosmetics could hide it all right like in this case here she lost her eye now i don't know why they didn't give her a marble eye and that her wear shades, but this kind of patch, like uh, uh, making her look as a, though she's, there was some famous, um, I think it was an Israeli famous soldier or whatever, that wore something like that. I mean, it looks so, not so feminine, you know? And uh, I'm saying that she's second guessing herself, all this kind of thing, and then she realized that, you know, with this eye here, nobody's gonna want her. I don't know if she had a boyfriend, I don't know, but, you know, I'm just speculating here. So I think that she has summed up, look, I'm a waste. I'm a lost. Um, she's wasted her time uh, trying to go after something which don't necessarily lead to women success. Deep down in the heart of a woman, I don't care who, who she is, there are certain things that would make her feel uh, successful. I've heard people say that this lady said in graduating with her highest honors and, and big doctor this and that or whatever. That was exciting. But you know what was more exciting than that when she became a mom, when she got married. So women have a different expectation in life and somehow 
men encouraging women to get into things that men feel successful and think why why we don't encourage men to go and have babies well of course that's impossible right but you know i mean this is what we do we do we doing these women a great disservice by pushing them into things that are sort of a contrary to what would be best for them we're thinking what would be best for the country or what would be best for our men i recall long ago women when they get together they will go one side and talking about whatever and men one side and men are saying you know my wife she's not a good company when we're talking football she's gone or when we're talking boxing so no women now trying to understand boxing and football and all these sports and men brutality things and they're, they're cutting in onto what they really ought to be about the feminine this and that you know collaborating with other women passing on information you know experiences and so forth but you know nutrition and child rearing and the whole night how to you know keep your man happy and you know that, that kind of thing so i want to believe that in, in total uh, she feels disappointed she's feeling rejected she's feeling lonely and uh, her only way out is you know perhaps to do a mild suicide or perhaps the worry and the strain has caused her heart to give out perhaps which is kind of suicidal in a way I, I recall there was this young girl long time ago she was the youngest girl to fly or child to fly across the nation non-stop or something like that but that is not what gonna make a woman happy so she grew up lonely I think she went on to do some college degree in psychology or whatever and she ended up shooting herself with some shotgun because all when it comes down to what a woman was created for and what she has inspiration for and what is going to really make her happy is if she gets married she has some kids I mean, women have a different sort of a um, unconscious sort of a or yearning and desires. And when we come with all this stuff, we're going to be a race car driver, be a boxer, you know, be a truck driver. And I mean, look, man, civilized. Look, in the Middle East, these people are doing things that uh, experience has shown them that works. They put a woman as the president or as the army general. Uh, I mean, you change this lady, she should have been out there, you know, uh, bringing forth life and, and, and holding the home together and holding society together. So, uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy though that Maria de Villota had to die that, but I, I do hope that, and then the saying she's going to heaven. I mean, no, 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 she is dead. She's going to go into the grave when Christ returns. Uh, the judgment would have already been set. Her character is already set. Whether she's going to go to heaven or to hell is already set at death, so that um, she's just not going to wait the return of the Lord. Whether he's going to, you know, pronounce her to eternal damnation or to take her uh, to be with him. So she's not joining no angels. She hasn't gone to heaven. She's going to be right in the grave and waiting for Christ to return to uh, give her her reward.